Hi everyone, this is the um, how far I've got with the Lost Ocean Skull. We did a tutorial in the last video for the pencil work there. I used this black Posca pen to uh, colour in the background and I'm also repeated exactly the same here. If you're using the Posca pen, do be careful. It does smudge if, you, if it's still wet, so leave it to dry. Never close your book um, with the pen. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just having a rearrange. Um, with the never close your book with the until you've left the pen to dry. I'm just zooming in because we're going to be doing this bottom piece here. I can't zoom in anymore, it's just going to go out shot. Um, I, I've got limited space, oh, a little bit more. Yeah, that'll be good. We'll just move it across a bit. There we are. Okay, and we're going to use the same colors. And the, as we did for the for the top of it, um, because I think it'll all tie in nicely then. And I'm purposely gone down here so I don't smudge any of the pen at the top. I'm going to do this one for you. The other one on the other side here will be the same, so you can do that on your own. And then following, you could even replay the video and just do it in reverse. Well, do it not in reverse. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking because I'm not making any sense and I'm going to grab a colour and get going. So I'm going to use the grass green again to start the um, grassy bits like we did before. So a harder layer near the bottom and then fade it as we go up towards the top. So anyway, um, as I said, leave the pen to dry. I tend to leave my book open overnight if I've used any pen in it, even if it's just a few dots because it can transfer to the other side. I don't know how long it takes to dry, so I just give it a long, long time. It's going up there a bit. I'm just trying to work out where all these are going. That's going there. Where's this one come from? It must be behind there. Okay, now we've got these here. If you don't have the Posca pen, I think in this book um, you can use like a felt pen or a fine liner and I don't think they go through the page but test it out in the back first always test even with the Posca because if your book isn't from the UK or the same edition as mine the paper might be slightly different and you don't want to um, have it going through the page that would be a disaster I'm going to do the same with this one so uh, you know you want to preserve that picture on the back whatever it might be so I just beware so uh, I'm finding these colours quite fun. This is the true green to try and make them look quite bright and Halloween-y. But not scary, you know. I don't like scary things. But it's quite fun to use these sort of Halloween-y colour scheme and just have a bit of fun with it. And Halloween is coming up quite soon now. And also to sort of use a consistent colour scheme through the page is also fun. It gives a consistency to the picture. Makes it look, I find it sort of ties things together. As I've said lots of times before, some people can do completely random colours and it looks, or maybe it looks random, probably isn't. And it looks amazing. If I try that, it looks like a big old mess. So I'm trying to stick to a limited amount of colours. And uh, hopefully that will be helpful. So, uh, just working through all of these little grassy bits using exactly the same technique as we did earlier on. Just trying to cover it over, right in the tip and blend it all in just by going over it with a fairly hard layer. There we go. And we'll do the same on this side um, in our spare time. I'm going to do the other greens. No, let's not. Let's not do greens next. Let's move on to the oranges. Um, just because it's more interesting. We'll come back to the greens in a minute. Now, with our oranges on the higher one, which I'm pointing at and you can't see, we did, sorry, pumpkin orange for one that looked a bit like this. So that's what I'm going to do do now and just fade it up and just seeing what else we've got up here we've got a curly just trying to work out what what's going on here these are sort of intertwined right we have I think this one here 
there and one here. It's quite um, difficult to see what's going on there. But that's how I've interpreted it. And then we went for the um, pale vermilion, I remember. And so for this one, we'll just go all over the top. The pale vermilion. And that helps to blend it all together. And we will use it for here as well. So for the centre part on the first part of the leaves of this plant. Just looking, we don't have any more, so we'll move on to this bit. And again, go over the top. And to the tip, just hoping my son's okay. Thinking about him this morning because he um, he went off to college and then thought that maybe he should have completed some homework that he thinks he might need to hand in this morning. But he um, wasn't sure, so we hadn't done it. This is orange, um, which for the ends of this one. So we're just going over the whole thing in this orange colour. They're quite laid back at the college about handing stuff in, but he wants to get it in on time. We had a lot of homework and he did other things that he knew was due in, but we're not sure. I don't know. The teachers don't, um, or lecturers as they like to call themselves, olive green um, for these leaves. Now we're moving on to the other leaves. They don't like to, um, they don't seem to give them the deadlines properly and they give them a lot of work and it's due in quite quickly but, uh, and they're still getting used to planning their time so I'm doing the, all the leaves with a little bit of the olive in near the stem like that and then we're going to use the, um, the apple green to finish them off as before, we'll just go over the top. Now you don't, as I say, you could use Prismas for this because the colours are the same if you have them, but they're, the spaces are quite fine. You'll have to sharpen them quite a lot and that might be a bit tricky. Although, where's my brush? Okay. Because we're um, going over the background with pen, then it might not matter if you go out of the lines because you can pen over the top of it. Um, I am not demonstrating my pen technique, it's just, I'm just penning it, it's really easy. But because I want to be quite accurate, I have to get really close to the page. I have to put my head right down close to the page and then you can't see anything because my head is in front of the camera. So I haven't um, filmed that bit. Right, we're going to go in with our violets. This is our violet blue. Um, I'm doing the pick which ones to do in this colour. I'm just very random. Just start with this one. So basically just doing exactly the same. You don't even have to do each petal separately. Just do a harder layer near the edge and then less as we go out. Um, I'm going to treat this like it's a flower and this just so it sort of all ties together, I think it's easier. Um, I'm trying to choose which one. I think I'll do this as petals here. So a little bit darker near to this rounded bit. And lighter towards the edge. It's quite nice because it's quite similar to this one in that the purples are on the end and that sort of thing. Now I'm trying to remember, yes, we did the Palmer Violet with the Blue Violet. So we're going to use that to finish off these petals. So if you go all the way over the top, it helps to blend it in. Like that. isn't it? Oh, this one's my favourite. This is the violet. This violet isn't my favourite but this combo is. Now this has got this sort of 
piece here we're going to ignore that just going to do the violet and not worry about it keeping it simple because there's so many details we can just make it a little bit easier for ourselves and the last color purple is the dahlia purple this is the one that's my favorite i've actually got the um going to go right to the edge of that i've actually got the um poly um oh, prismacolor premiere one of this i think i don't use it very often because it's uh, because it's in a drawer that uh, i should do it's a nice color i have a similar color in my um castle art i think okay you may want to mix that up a bit i actually think it might look better if i'd gone there and there and there maybe not and we'd have had those next to each other don't know anyway that's that now the um remember we did the spanish orange for some of the edges of the um centers i'm going to do the same again so i'm not going to ignore that but i'm going to ignore that bit the same here i'm not going to ignore this but i'm just going to color over that just because it's a bit easier so we're going to use the golden rod to start with just like before and do a hard layer around here and less towards the center like that and finish off with the canary yellow and just go over the whole of the center just blend it all together make it stand out okay so that's that nice and simple very similar to the other bit and the idea now is for you to go away and do that side as i say you can watch the video through again and just do it on this side instead of this side or you can just um remember if you can i i have to remember i don't really watch the video because i haven't been edited yet so uh, anyway so there's that as well and then do the black background of course if you don't like the idea of doing the black you can leave it white so that's me that's that one done and uh, I will come back to you um, when it's done and we'll do the main part of the skull or in bits there's too much to do all in one I feel okay so thank you so much for watching and happy coloring <laughs>